Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Passing the CIP TV1 300-70 Exam, webinar number two of the CCNA CCMP collabora Collaboration Webinar Series, hosted by Fastlane and presented by Joey DeWheel. First, a few housekeeping items. All attendees, please, please leave your audio on mute to prevent any audio interference. We will be taking questions in the Q&A box on the right-hand side of your screen during the presentation. And then at the end, Joey will answer all of the questions that are not covered. Also, the slides and audio recording will be emailed out to all attendees within the week, so please look for that email from Fastlane Training. Now I'm going to hand the presentation off to Joey. Thanks, Lee. Uh, thanks for that. In, uh, sorry. Thanks for that introduction, um, and welcome everyone to understanding the CIP TV1 300-070 exam. So this is a webinar. We're going to look at what you need to do to pass this exam. Okay. So this is the first exam on your road to the CCNP collaboration certification. There's four exams, CIP TV1, CIP TV2, CAPS, and CT Collab. Uh, passing any of these individual exams also extends any other certifications you might have by three years. So if you have your CCNA Collab and you pass one of these four CCNP tests, that certification will be extended for three more years. Okay, many find the test difficult, but it's not so hard if you know what and how to study. And we're going to talk about this um, in this webinar. Okay, the CIP TV1 course, uh, which you can take from Fastlane or another learning partner, uh, helps a lot, okay, but it doesn't have all of the answers. The uh, foundation learning guide, which the name, the full name's listed there, I'm just going to say the foundation learning guide in future, Full name, Implementing Cisco IP Telephony and Video, Part 1, Foundation Learning Guide. That's not going to be available until September. These learning guides are normally a repackaging of the student guide from the course. So the content of those two things will be roughly similar. So these two things will help, but they won't have all of the answers. Okay, so you need to broaden what you look at to study or you're not going to pass. Okay, to pass, you need to know what's on the exam and what material to study. You need an effective study method and you need to allocate the time required given your background and experience. Okay, we can't give you the answers. This isn't a webinar where I go through all the questions that are on the exam and tell you the answers. Uh, what we're going to try to do here is help you get organized and increase your chance of success. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the blueprint. Okay. Let me just call up a, a marker here or a pointer. There we go. So we're going to talk about the blueprint. And these blueprints, which you can find on the Cisco at, at Learning uh, website, are vital to your ability to pass the exams. So you want to go and find the blueprints and make sure you study the material indicated there. Uh, finding the blueprint is the first uh, step, but then after you have to try and figure out what material uh, you want to study and you want to figure out how to find those study materials. You need an effective study method and you need to allocate the right amount of time. So we'll talk about all four of those things all four of these things in this webinar. Okay, first thing is what's on the exam? And I'm going to just pop this link. Let me just grab it and pop it into chat so that you've got this link and you can follow along. Okay, so hopefully you've got that link. You can click on it. You can uh, then navigate to this page and uh, you find a complete description of the exam. We've got an overview tab here. We have the blueprint, and again, this is vital, the exam topics. We have the study material, and we have some practice tests. You wanna review this very carefully. This is the key 
to passing the exam. Okay, so here's a little look at the blueprint for CIPTV1. So we can see the topics listed here on the left from dial plan down to configure media resources. Then you can see the percentage of test questions that are associated with the topic. So from this we know that dial plan is going to be a quarter of the exam, whereas the QoS portion is relatively small at 8%. Also, once you're done with the exam, okay, whether you pass or fail, you're going to get um, a score result that indicates what percentages you scored on each of these individual topics. Okay, if you um, look at the Cisco Learning Community, there are questions and there are threads on these exams. And here's a response to Cisco or from Cisco to questions about the CIPTV1 exam. And this goes to the issue of where does the content come from? So all exam items are mapped 100% to the blueprint. We're gonna look at the blueprint. The courses, labs, and guides are additional materials to assist you in studying and preparing for the exam, but are not a guarantee that knowing that the CIPTV1 or CIPTV2 or CAPS course, knowing the content in that course is not a guarantee that you will pass the exam. Now for CIPTV2 example, for example, for that exam, uh, the course, right, um, and the foundation learning guide are, are really not, uh, not adequate at all to pass the exam. For here, for CIPTV1, um, the course is uh, you know, much better. It gives you much better coverage of the content of the blueprint. And I'll discuss this later, but you're well advised to focus on the material in that CIPTV1 course. However, that's not going to guarantee you that you will be able to pass the exam. So you really need to study the blueprint. So dial plan topics, um, individual topics. So what I've done is I've expanded dial plan. We see that 25% of the test will be on the components of a dial plan, uh, CUCM calling privileges. So we've got partitions, calling cert spaces. You need to know, you know, a route patterns, point to route list, point to route groups, point to uh, devices. It could be a gateway or a SIP trunk. You need to know all of those things. You need to know how the dialed number analyzer works. You need to know about SIP route patterns. You need to know about normal um, uh, route patterns, right, telephony route patterns. You need to have all of that down uh, fairly well. And we'll come back to this when we look at what should I study. But again, the point here is questions could show up from any of these individual topics on the exam. Another 21% focuses on on cluster calling. And, and in fact, it says on cluster calling here, but that's not really correct. This should really be labeled as off cluster calling, uh, on cluster and off cluster calling. Uh, if you're doing on cluster calling, you, you don't have route patterns, right? Pointing to route list to gateways and so on. You may use translation patterns for this, but uh, you, you definitely need to understand off-cluster calling to be able to pass the test. So again, we have a, um, a list of subtopics. And if you look at this, we have 21% for configuration of, and this is really dial plan configuration. So 21% here is discussing dial plan configuration. 25% here is covering the dial plan. So together that's 46% of the exam is on dial plan. So that's the piece that you really need to know the best if you have a hope of passing this test. Okay, also on the test we have questions about um, the basic operation and components involved in a call. Okay, that's only 8% uh, of the exam, so you don't have to worry about that 
too much, right? But you surely need to know something about codex, G711, G729, uh, H263 and H264. And so on, you don't need to know about every codec every dev ever devised, but you need to focus, right, and understand the major codecs. Configuring an iOS gateway, you need to know uh, how to do that, right? So you need to understand dial peers on a router. You need to understand um, class of restriction, which is the equivalent to the communications manager class of service. You need to know about voice translation rules, and you need to know about um, prefixing digits, right? All of that kind of thing. And you need to understand about cube. So you need to know how the Cisco Unified Border Element uh, is configured, right? And particularly relevant to video. And you need to know what cube does at sort of a, a high level. Again, this is for 16% of the exam. You need to understand conferencing. And it, this is a grab bag of conferencing. So you need to understand iOS gateway configuration. You need to understand configuring uh, a conference in the communications manager. You need to know about telepresence server, telepresence conductor, right? You need to know about um, the, the video capabilities that we have uh, with these servers in addition to understanding call manager native conferencing configuration. There's a small section on QoS, and we'll talk about this a little bit in, in more detail later. Okay. Um, media resources. We need to understand about things like MTPs, transcoders, conference bridges, music on hold servers. Uh, the title here is media resources, but it does poke in here, configure IP phone services. So we also would want to know, for example, uh, how you would configure a phone service such as extension mobility. Okay, so that was a quick look at the blueprint. And again, I showed you where to find the blueprint. We sent you uh, a, a link to that just uh, a moment ago. And that, that is the first thing that you need to understand. So I, I recommend that if you're going to take this exam, the very first thing you do, go to the link, look at the blueprint, go through that material and say to yourself, how much do I know about these things? Okay, so having identified the blueprint, the next question is, you know, what am I going to study? What book am I going to get? What PDF am I going to download? What ebook am I going to subscribe to? to learn the material that I need to know to pass the exam. There's many topics on the exam, right? There's many different kinds of documents. There are SRNDs, deployment guides, administration and maintenance guides. There's the foundation learning guide that's coming in September. There's different versions of the products. The course itself is focused on the 10.5 version of Communications Manager, but other uh, study material references the 9.x SRND. So you can expect that you'll get questions from both Communications Manager 9, Communications Manager 10. Um, any questions on those two versions should be legitimate. Okay, we're going to get uh, we're going to help you get uh, started here. So the first place to look is Cisco at Learning and, and what do they say you should be studying. So I've gone to the overview here of the CIP TV1 exam. This is hard to read in the slide. Okay, recommended training. But again, I, I've given you a link to the page, right? So you can go to this page with that link and you can find this information and you can see that there's a recommendation here that you take the CIP TV1 course. And this has pretty good but not complete coverage of the material that you need to know. Uh, we have a link here, Cisco Technology Training for Collaboration eLearning. Unfortunately, that link is broken. I sent an email to um, 
the people looking after this pointing this out, so we'll have to wait and see if that gets fixed. There are Cisco press books that you can pay for. Now, if you go to that link, there are no specific Cisco press books identified. Uh, there is going to be the Foundation Learning Guide available from Cisco Press. That would be a good book. We'll talk about what you might want to do for study materials in more detail uh, in just a few more slides. So there is more guidance at the Cisco uh, at Learning website, Learning at Cisco. So we see study materials. So for each of these exams, Cisco lists some materials that you can study for each of these topics. And it, now, at the moment, this is not very comprehensive. So you're not going to be able to go to these web pages and find this is what you need to study. There are su some suggestions, but at the moment, it's, it's really up to you to try and figure out where do I find the study material to understand what I need to know to pass the exam. So we looked at what Cisco recommends for CIP TV1. Okay, some of the sections in that tab, study materials, uh, refer to this um, product, the Cisco Unified Communications Manager 9.x series e-learning product. That's offered by the Cisco Learning Network. You need a premium subscription to access that content, and that comes in at $11 a month. Okay, so we looked at that actual document. We looked at that e-learning product. And uh, unfortunately, this is really uh, a number of Cisco engineers explaining the software architecture of the Cisco Unified Communications Manager and the inner workings of its components. So I, I found this fascinating. It would be great if you were going to do your CCIE and probably good for the CT Collab exam, but I would not recommend this as a study tool for CIP TV1. It's uh, basically a lot of block diagrams on a whiteboard with information as to you know, inner process communication and, and this software architecture. So while this is a good product, is it appropriate for you to use to study for CIP TV1? No, it's not actually a, a, a useful study tool. There's no configuration information. It is a very deep dive on the software architecture. The only other study material reference is another Cisco e-learning product, establishing an on-cluster call with Cisco Call Manager. I don't think you need to pay or be logged in to have a look at that. Um, and it's, it's not a bad product, but unfortunately, it's based on Call Manager version 4.1. Okay, so uh, here we have a, a, a screen cap. For you know, those of you that have been around <laughs> that long, uh, the Call Manager 4.1 GUI you know, had a whole different sort of color scheme, a little bit different look and feel. So I would not advise going back that far in time to study this material. So it's, it's useful and, and interesting, and it helps with general content, but really focusing your study on a 4.1 product when we're at you know, we're actually at 11.5 is is just about to come out. So we've 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 come a long way from 4.1. Okay, so other than the CIP TV1 course, we really have nothing useful that's that's recommended in our opinion. So just to be clear, I have taken this test. I passed this test. Uh, it's not as hard as, for example, CIP TV2, but you still need to um, figure out what to study. You need to identify the study material, and you're going to have to spend the time that you need to uh, you know, get that blueprint sorted out so that you can pass the exam. So the first thing that we're going to look at is study material for dial plan topic. 
and this topic describe and configure Cisco Unified Communications Manager to support, and again, this should be off cluster calling or on and off cluster calling. So this is 46% of the exam, and this is really mostly about route patterns, translation patterns, digit manipulation, your dial plan hierarchy, route pattern points to route list, points to route group, points to gateway or trunk, partitions and calling search spaces, understanding the wild cards in route patterns. Uh, you need to know something about communications manager groups, right? And you're going to have to know what you know device pools are all about. Okay, so this is what I would describe as basics. When I uh, teach the CIP TV1 course, I, I tell people, you know, if you understand the dial plan, and as part of the dial plan, you know, it's the route patterns, then you have your dial plan hierarchy, which decides which gateway to route out, and then you have, um, and part of that is what digit manipulation to do, and then you have class of service or partitions and calling search spaces. If you understand the dial plan, then you've mostly figured out the communications manager. So this is your number one task, is to figure out how these things work. Same thing for the exam, 46% of the overall content. So let's just step back and ask ourselves, what kinds of documents are available? How can I find them and how useful are they? So we went to Cisco at Learning and we discovered that there's not a lot there's not a lot of material that they're pointing us to. So we have to go and look and find this stuff ourselves. Now, I'll say right away, the CIP TV1 course student guide is the best place to start. It maps uh, reasonably well to the blueprint. Again, it does not guarantee you that you can pass this exam. There's going to be a foundation learning guide, right? And these uh, foundation learning guides, uh, in, in a lot of cases, are kind of a, a reformatting of the corresponding courses student guide. So what we can see in CIP TV1, in the CIP TV1 course, should also be in the um, Foundation Learning Guide. Now for CIP TV2, where the Foundation Learning Guide is already out, this was mostly true, but not completely true. So there was some mismatch of content between the course and the Learning Guide. Uh, but for the most part, these things overlap fairly well. Now, this learning guide won't be available until September. So if you're in a situation where you don't want to take this course, or you've taken CIPT1, right, and you, you just want to move forward to the CIPTV1 test, um, if, you, if you don't have access to the student guide, you have to wait until September in order to get the foundation learning guide. But there's other official documents we can look at. SRNDs, admin, deployment, feature and service guides. There are Cisco Live presentations that you can find and look at. And there's a lot of unofficial material. If you go and search in YouTube, uh, Cisco Dial Plan, right? Or if you just search for Cisco Dial Plan in, in Google or Bing or whatever, and you look at videos, um, there's a lot of basic information on YouTube that's actually quite good that you can have a look at. The best place to start is the CIP TV1 uh, course student guide, and that's where we recommend you focus your attention. So the very first thing you should do is understand the student guide from the CIP TV1 course. If you haven't or can't take the course, then what are you going to do? Well, for now, you've, you've kind of got two options. Um, if you need to pass quickly, right, um, you can have a look at the last version 
of the Foundation Learning Guide. This is the Foundation Learning Guide for the previous version of the CIPT V1 course, which is CIPT1. Okay, it's old and missing some content um, that's going to come in the, the new document in September, but it still has a lot of excellent content that's identified in the blueprint, particularly concerning the dial plan. So if you can't wait until September, this is a good option for you. Uh, uh, purchase this book or the, the e-guide. In September, we should have the actual Foundation Learning Guide corresponding to the CIP TV1 course. So you can just hold out a little bit, um, if you like, and, and wait until September to get this, this book. Um, there are a lot of great Cisco Live presentations, okay, and you can access these here. Right, https ciscolive.com slash online slash connect. Uh, I should have a, a link for this. I'd like to paste this into. I don't want you to have to write these out, so let's just find the link and paste it into chat. I have the link and I pasted it into chat. So you may have to set up an account to gain access to the presentations, uh, but there are, uh, there are uh, an awful lot of useful presentations here of the uh, intro variety or overview variety. Here's how to get started with X. So um, something that you can look at Okay, we went and had a look in here, and uh, I've been to a number of these presentations, particularly on the dial plan topic, and um, we would recommend these Johan Krohn presentations. And you can go back to 2015 is, is only last year, right? 2014, most of the material in these presentations from 2014 is relevant. Go back to 2013, 2012, if you like. The, the dial plan um, has a lot of commonality across the last few versions. But this is something that we would recommend you look at from 2014. Enterprise Dial Plan Fundamentals. That's from uh, Cisco Live 2014 in San Francisco. And we could see the agenda here, call routing basics, call search spaces, translation patterns, and so on. So if you're looking for free stuff, right? Not everybody wants to pay, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars to buy materials to study for these exams. Here you go. There's some material um, in the fundamentals presentation, and there's also an advanced dial plan presentation. So that presentation was quite good. I was at that one live in 2014. Um, the first presentation calls out sections of the 10.x SRND, the Solutions Reference Network Design Guides. Um, the SRND is your friend. That's a quote from Johan Krohn. So um, that's not my quote. He says the SRND is your friend. I, I happen to agree with it. So some of this material from the 10.x SRND is called out. It's very useful to run through this material. Look at the Cisco Live presentations first, then go to the SRND and see what you can figure out from that path. The SRND is a heavy document. There's a lot in it. Um, it could be hard to use as a starting point, but the better you get to know the SRND, uh, you know, the more chance you have of passing these exams and, and the more useful you're going to be at work. So the SRD is your friend. Uh, download it and get familiar with the content. There's a good recommendation. Some of these topics, so if you go through, I, I said the course doesn't cover everything, right, that's on the exam, and it doesn't. So, for example, 
describe VCS calling privileges, rules, classes, services, transforms, search rules, and zones. Uh, there's nothing really in the course, and so I imagine in the foundation learning guide either when it comes out on that as a topic. Modify, analyze, and document a dial plan. Well, the course certainly talks about modifying a dial plan, but it doesn't go through analyzing a dial plan, for example. So how to use the dialed number analyzer. Um, that's a tool that, that uh, that's a part of the communications manager. You better read up on that. Document a dial plan. I'm not actually sure, to be honest, what that's really referring to. Um, so I, I didn't study documenting a dial plan. Remember, you've only got so much time. You can't learn everything. Manage your time. All of this is on 25% of the exam. So you can't spend three weeks learning about VCS calling privileges, right? You can't spend a week trying to figure out documenting a dial plan. DNS dial plans are not configured inside of uh, the CIPT v1 class or, or discussed. DNS dial plans, if you look at this, you know, the only thing that supports all four of these different kinds of dial plans would be VCS and Expressway. So when you're looking at this, what, what this tells me if I'm uh, trying to figure out what to study is, well, I need to know the call manager dial plan really well, but I also need to um, you know, understand a little bit about the dialed number analyzer. I need to know the basics of VCS based on how much time I might have available and I should know something about at least the different kinds of dial plans. So I might want to look up what a DNS dial plan is inside of VCS, even if I don't want to go into you know, that much detail on that specific content. Um, some other topics here. Describe the basic operation and components involved in a call. So this is only on 8%. So if you look at what you have out there to study, um, outside of the courseware itself, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not entirely sure what I would recommend for this. And, and given that we're looking at 8%, my approach in this, in, in this last exam was just to assume that you know, I knew the basics of this enough to get you know, one or two questions right. Certainly, you want to um, have a basic understanding of codecs, G711, G729, wideband, you know, the, the, the audio codecs. You want to know a little bit about video codecs, H263, H264, and so on. All right, it's, it's only natural that you should understand something about codecs given that, you know, that's what VoIP is all about. Right, but remember, manage your time. This is only 8%. Configure an iOS gateway. So uh, an iOS gateway, um, or if you're configuring Call Manager Express, you would have the same sort of requirements to configure digital voice ports, dial peers, do digit manipulation, you know, prefix digits, voice translation rules. On the router, configuring call privileges is core, class of restriction, so you should know something about that. Show and debug commands under verify dial plan implementation, so make sure you understand what show commands there are to show you what, um, you know, what numbers will match, which dial peers, what debug commands exist to show you what um, you know, what dial peers are being matched by an incoming call, right, both incoming and outbound, and you should know something about Cube. I did find that the CIPT V1 course was uh, weak on this material, and, you know, that could pose a problem given that it's about 16% of the uh, content for the course. So you may want to try and supplement that with some additional um, study material. Now I went and found this, 
And again, let me find this link and paste it into chat. There you go, um, which has um, a, a lot more detail. Now it's um, a little bit heavy uh, going. It's a configuration guide, so you know some of it is you know is tough reading, right? So what you really have to do is kind of go through it, skim, and then you know call out some of the more important things configuring dial peers, you know, what what we have for wild cards, how dial peer matching works, that's covered in the uh in the book. Look at uh digit manipulation and class of restriction. And and then you really should be looking up some show commands and debug commands. Okay, and this is basically the document I just sent you a link to. Okay, dial peer configuration on voice gateway routers configuration guide. I basically just did a search for Cisco IOS voice gateway configuration guide basic. Um, you know, you can do a variety of different searches, but again, when you when you're looking for material, you've got to go back to the blueprint. So you can um, Google or Bing or Yahoo search, whatever, configure an iOS gateway, and then look through your search results and try and find something that you can work with that's going to provide an overview and that will help you to understand the, the details here. Okay, so we've discussed this. Configuring conferencing devices uh, this is a hard one because configuring these different devices is not discussed in any single document. That should read CIPT v1, so that's actually a typo here. So uh, sorry about that, that's CIPT v1 student guide. So you, you really are looking at here configuring conferences using iOS gateways. So we can have um, an iOS gateway to voice conferencing or it could do video conferencing and as well you can put a conference resource directly on the communications manager so you've got communications manager and you've got in conjunction with that your, your routers your iOS gateways but in addition to that we have the larger video uh, conferencing server. So you have to know something about the telepresence server, which is the actual MCU, right? The media convergence unit, the the conferencing device itself. You have to know something about telepresence conductor. This helps manage a set of telepresence servers to facilitate conferencing. Global conference settings you want to go into um, the enterprise and system parameters and find whatever global conference settings there are and, and understand those. Okay, in addition, there's this particular product, the NSC 8000, right, and various subsidiary products. You want to look that up, right, and have a basic understanding of that, um, of that conferencing product to match the questions that might come on it. But again, right, five subtopics, right, 11% of the total exam, right? So you're looking at, you know, six to eight questions on the five topics here, right? So you could find one or two questions from each of these topics. You can't learn everything, right? Uh, manage your time. A QoS model, this is um, you know, another piece that's not that large. So again, manage your time and you, you have to understand what this diff serve is. And certainly if you're going to learn about diff serve, you should understand the difference between diff serve and int serve, integrated services at a high level. Describe markings based on class of service. Right, which is layer two, and DSCP and IP precedence is layer three. Distinguish where to configure layer two to layer three QoS mapping. 
policing and shaping, and justifying the requirement for QoS when implementing video. So, you know, what did we do? Uh, again, this is one of these situations where the CIPT V2 course, you know, it has a half day on this to go through the overview. That's a great place to start. But what if you don't have the courseware at hand? What are you going to do? Well, think about it. This is actually something that we did for CIPT V2. So that is not a typo. We started with the basics. We went to cluster-wide QoS parameters, and we just had a look at what's configured here, the DSCP values for audio, for video, for telepresence, right, um, to be sure we understood the actual values for calls that are being made. You know, if the CP values are important, you should know some basics, right? Um, our assured affording settings, AF11 corresponds to DSCP10, so we can look at interactive video, AF41 corresponds to DSCP34. We should, we should know some of these basics, and don't forget about EF here, expedited forwarding. From the 10.x CUCM SRD, look, you need to know um, in not just CIP TV1, but if you're looking after the communications manager, this basic diagram is important. For immersive video, we're using CS4. For interactive video, we're using AF41. For signaling, we're using CS3. For audio, we're using EF, right? Um, so these basic things you should certainly have a grip on when you're going to do the exam. What else should you study? Well, again, already mentioned that this, sorry, this should be again a CIP TV1 course. So sorry, a couple of typos here. The CIP TV1 course has the content you need to study and that content will be in the foundation learning guide when it's available in September. Okay, um, the uh, collaboration system 10.x SRND has a section on QoS, so it won't hurt to go and have a look at what's in there. And you can look at the QoS SRND at the overview sections inside of that SRND to get the basics on these things. What is policing? What is shaping? What is differentiated services? And so on. But again, remember, it's only 8% of your exam. Manage your time. Media resources also configured in the CIP TV1 course um, and covered, right? We have labs for that and coverage in the course, so a good spot. The SRND is another good place to look for a discussion on media termination points, conference bridges, music on hold servers, transcoders, and so on. So there's a couple of places to go and have a look. Again, you don't need to do a huge deep dive, but just 11% of the exam will be on these topics. And don't forget phone services, it's not a media resource, right? So we have to assume that, although it says media resource here, that you may have some questions on IP phone services. Okay, so let's just finish off here. Um, we're We've only got um, about 15 minutes left, including Q&A. So study methods, the first thing, um, or the, the, the question here is, how should I study? So we talked about the blueprint. You need to know what's on the blueprint. We talked about trying to find the materials to study. And we said, look, if this is your first priority, and it's not so easy to find the material you need to study. But once you've found that, what is it that you're going to do to study it? Right? There's many ways to study. So you can read and reread. And you know, for some people, this is enough. I know people whose memories are so good that they just have to read the material a couple of times and they remember it. Um, for me, I, I used to need to reread things a few times, but 
now that I'm older, I, I need to reread things 10 times if I'm going to remember much of it. So, you know, that's, that's an option, but it only gets you so far. Take notes and summarize. So we'll talk about uh, crib notes a little bit later. Practice, right? So uh, if you have access to practice, uh, a, a lab that you can use to practice, that's useful. CIPT V1 is um, a lot simpler in terms of the virtual machines you need to deploy to build your own lab. It's much easier to build a practice lab for CIPT V1 than it is, for example, for CAPS or CIPT V2. And then there's practice tests or practice questions. Read and reread. Okay, this may be a good first step, but it's problematic as a complete solution. Take notes and summarize. Uh, we'll talk about building crib notes. Uh, we used crib notes to pass the CIPT V2 exam, um, which is, is much harder than the CIPT V1, and we're, we're building crib notes now for um, CAPS, which is the next exam we're going to be looking at. So um, that's, that's something that we've done. And I built crib notes for CIPT-1 when I took that many years ago. I haven't explicitly built crib notes yet for CIPT-V1 for this exam, but that's something that we're planning on doing and incorporating into um, our, our fast lane courses. Okay, so we're not aware of any CIPTV1 practice labs other than the actual CIPTV1 labs. Okay, so um, we, we don't actually believe the CIPTV1 labs gives you enough skills by themselves to pass the, um, to pass the exam. So the lab itself, it's useful, right, but it's not the be-all and end-all to get it to the point where you can pass the the exam. You could possibly try uh, dCloud. Um, it's a little bit problematic for something like CIP TV1 because you really need something set up as a learning environment where you can configure a dial plan. You can build a CIP TV1 home lab reasonably easy. Um, it's, uh, well, relatively easy, I should say. It's much easier than what you would need for CIP TV2. There's no actual practice labs out there, really, um, that you can get to that, that, that are really cost effective. There's some practice questions, okay? The Learning Network has 10 practice questions, and uh, I would advise you to run through them. Um, however, getting 100% on these does not mean that you're going to be able to pass the test. There's practice questions in the course, and there will be, I'm assuming, in the foundation learning guide. If you've got access to the course where you should do those questions, that's, that's a good place to start as well. You can search the internet and you can find many practice tests. And this is a natural thing for people to do, right? When I was at uh, university, I would look at older exams for um, uh, practice questions. Um, if you're doing your um, LSAT or MCAT, right, the first thing you would do is start downloading practice tests to run through them. But for Cisco CIPTV1 practice tests, the ones you find on the uh, internet, they're not approved. Okay, you're only allowed to use approved Cisco material for studying. Using them to prep would be considered cheating if the questions on those tests are copies of the real test questions, you know, and, and as well, you won't have the job skills that are uh, uh, necessary. So, you know, I, I've had students say, well, what about taking these, these exams, these practice exams of brain dumps? You know, some people innocently subscribe and download them and then find that the questions are exactly the same as what are on the exam. So, that's not really right. We're not um, advising you to do that. We're telling you here, none of those uh, brain dumps or downloads are approved. 
and um, it could be considered cheating, right, if you download these and the questions correspond exactly to what's on your real exam. Crypt notes. So we started building crypt notes, I put, and we've really been doing this uh, aggressively for CIPTV2. For CIPTV1, I've just started looking into this, and we will come up with something uh, that we're going to add into our CIPTV1 course delivery. So we'll put some crypt notes in there that help you to summarize things like configuring a, a dial plan, for example, or um, configuring dial peers on the router. So, I mean, the idea is to indicate what the tasks are, and for an individual task here, call out special things that you might need to know, put it on a page of paper, and get to the point where you can remember the content of the page a paper and, and actually fill it out um, from um, from blank or, or from scratch. Study efforts. How much time should you spend preparing? Well, it depends on your background. Okay, if you don't know the CUCM dial plan, well, if you do know it, then you have a very good start. If you don't know it well, then you have a large effort. Man weeks for sure. Uh, this is not something where you can take the, the foundation learning guide or you can take the course, right, and, you know, study it for a week. You know, as, as a CCSI, as an instructor, I used to tell people, you've got the course, spend a week studying it, take the test, you should do okay. It doesn't work that way anymore. The course is not good enough, right, so you first of all, have to spend the effort to really understand the dial plan well and that will take man weeks if you're a beginner right and you don't really understand this um, if you do know the dial plan well then you've got things like video conferencing that you're going to have to really come up to speed with if, if you're not familiar with that there's some effort on router configuration if you haven't done a lot of that in the past so you're looking at man weeks to um, prepare to pass this test. It's also difficult to know when are you ready, right? Because you can't download a practice test and run through it and see, you know, did I get 100 or did I get 40? Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so it's difficult to know when you are ready. You almost have to allocate the time, run through the blueprint, study to, th to, to the point where you think you understand these topics, and then take the test and see what happens. It's not an embarrassment to fail. Uh, it is common for people to fail these exams. Um, I failed the CIPT1 exam the first time I took it when it, when it came out four or five years ago and I had been delivering the course for years and uh, other instructors were in a similar situation. Uh, I know of um, at least one instructor, very competent, who's uh, taught these courses for years and who did not pass the CIPTV1 exam on his uh, uh, first attempt. So, you know, it's it's difficult to know when you're ready. Uh, these exams are not uh, trivial or, or simple in any way, shape, or form. Okay, a little summary. The 30070 exam, it's the first exam on the road to CCMP collaboration. We looked at the blueprint and study materials. We talked about some study methods, and we talked a little bit about the effort required. So, you know, this is not a presentation to say, here's how to pass the exam, because we don't actually believe we can produce such a presentation without giving you the questions and answers, right? But what we hope we've done is help you to understand what's on the exam, to get organized for studying, and to prepare for the exam. 
we have a couple of courses here uh, at Fastlane. And we're actually updating all of the courses at Fastlane to include exam prep content. So this is a Fastlane value add. We're going to add into these courses a review of the blueprint, and we're going to start including you know, how to find the material, how to build some crib notes, and you know, some um, practice some practice and study uh, techniques. So we're including these into our courses. First course here at CIPT V1 Bridge. This is basically material from CIPT V1 excluding the dial plan piece. So imagine that you understand the common energy dial plan really well and you want to pick up the extra material from CIPT V1 covering, for example, um, video conferencing in Cube, for example. Uh, well, there we go. There's a two-day course focused on the new material, and this is the basic five-day course. And again, we're supplementing this with value add for how to prep for the exam, what's on the exam, and so forth. Okay, so here's the enhancements. So I've talked about this. We're adding this exclusive exam prep content to our courses. Thank you. I went a little uh, long, um, so we should get right to Q&A. If, if there are any questions, um, let me have them at this point and uh, I, will, I, will, I will answer them right now. Hey, Joey, we do have a couple of questions that came in through our chat. Um, the first one is, do you recommend waiting for the foundation learning guide to be available? Um, yes, I, I, I actually think that you've got a much better chance of passing this exam if you, if you either take the CIPT V1 course, in which case you then have the material itself, or if you wait until the foundation learning guide comes out, that will have the material that's in the course in it, right? Uh, in the you know in the in the learning guide. So if you can't afford the the course, you know if your company's not going to send you on the course and you, you want to get that material in a cheaper format, that's the foundation learning guide, and you'd be best to wait until that that comes out in September. Terrific, and we do have a little bit more time, uh, so I'll give a few more questions. Uh, we had a, a couple come in asking, what order should the four exams be taken in? Um, that's a good question. That actually came up at the Cisco Live presentation in um, in Las Vegas last week. Uh, the way to take these exams, CIPTV1 is the first one, then you can take CIPTV2, then you can take CAPS, and then you can follow that with CT Collab. You could change the order of CIPT V2 and CAPS around. That's, it's not so important that you do one first or the other, but what I would do is CIPT V1, CIPT V2, CAPS, and CT Collab. In fact, that's the way that I'm organizing myself to study and, and pass this round of these tests. Okay, and, yes, uh, and yeah, lastly, we're, we're, what's that now? No, go ahead. Oh, uh, uh, last question, can I build a home lab for study purposes? Um, you can. For CIPT V1, because a, a lot of the material is, um, is call manager specific, you don't need a lot of VMs, you don't need your own C-series server. Uh, to deploy a lab. So you can deploy a lab with a couple of call manager VMs. You can use one as a simulated PSTN and the other as your enterprise um, server. You can use IP communicator and a couple of cheap phones and you can get um, you know 60% of the content you can get uh, to work in a, in a reasonably inexpensive home lab but you need to have the installable ISOs, right? So you would have to be able to get those from, from work. All right, terrific. So thank you everybody for attending today's webinar and a big thank you to our presenter, Joey. So thanks everybody and I hope you have a great rest of the afternoon.
Thanks, everyone.